Chandler Morris was a 48-year-old loan officer at Chase Bank in Houston, Texas. She was happily married to Jay Morris and was loved by many others. At 6 a.m. on October 12, 2000, Mary left her home in her Chevy Lumina to drive to her job in Houston. Throughout the day, Jay, her husband, tried to call her, but she never answered or returned any of his calls. This was unusual of Mary Lou, so Jay began to worry. At around 5 p.m., he called her supervisor. Alarmingly, they told Jay she hadn't come into work that morning and wasn't picking up their calls either. Jay knew something was wrong and immediately reported his wife missing. Around the same time Jay called the police, a man who had been driving down the highway reported a smoldering car near the road not even three miles from Mary Lou and Jay's home. Earlier that day, around 10 a.m., someone had called the police and reported seeing smoke in the area. The fire department did not take action as they believed it was a controlled burn. The police arrived to the location of their smoldering car. Mary's burnout vehicle was found on a remote road with her body in the front seat. Her body was ignited with gasoline and was burned so badly that investigators were unable to determine the exact cause of death. And while her purse and wedding ring were missing, she still had many pieces of melted jewelry on her body, which seemed to rule out robbery as being a motive. They did, however, find a tooth, which led to the body being confirmed as Mary Lou. Mary Lou's murder shocked those who knew her. She had been a kind and generous woman, no one could think of a reason someone would want to hurt her. Her current husband, Jay, and ex-husband, had been ruled out as suspects. The day after Mary Lou's death, the Houston Chronicle received a bizarre call. The man on the other end informed them they got the wrong Mary Morris the first time. Mary McGinnis Morris was a 39-year-old nurse practitioner. She had a successful career working for a major industrial corporation and was in charge of various clinics. She was married to Mike Morris, had a daughter, and also lived in Houston, Texas. Unfortunately, her body was found in her Dodge Intrepid on another remote road, approximately 25 miles from where Mary Henderson Morris was killed. She had been beaten and shot in the head, and her vehicle's passenger side door was wide open. The only item missing from the scene was one of Mary's rings and the murder weapon was a gun owned by her husband, Mike Morris. It appeared that someone had made a failed attempt to make Mary's death look like a suicide. She had torn clothing, bruise marks on her wrist, and there was also evidence that she had been gagged. At 5.34 p.m. the previous day, Mary called up a friend on her cell phone, claiming she had left her clinic to run errands and was now at a drugstore, but saw someone who gave her the creeps. Mary said she was going to return to the clinic and then head home, but at 5.47 p.m., Mary used her cell phone to make a frantic call to 911. The actual contents of the 911 call have not been released, but it's been implied that Mary was in the midst of being attacked. Mary McGinnis was a friendly person. She loved her job and got along with her co-workers. However, there was one exception. One of the newer employees in her staff, Dwayne Young, made her feel very nervous. She even told one of her best friends, Lori, that she was certain he was capable of harming her. According to Lori, Mary McGinnis once found her desk unorganized and her picture frames face down in the opposite direction with death to her written on a piece of paper. Mary McGinnis was positive it had been Duane. The same day she found the alarming threat, she asked her husband to teach her how to use a gun so she could keep one in her car. Mike agreed and placed a gun registered in his name under the driver's seat of her car. The police do not believe that these two murders are connected. Many people, including both Morris's families, disagree. They don't believe it's possible that with only three days of difference, 
two women with the same first and last name who happen to look alike and live in Houston, a city with over two million people, were coincidentally murdered in a similar way. What most people think happened is that a hitman killed both women. Supposedly, a hitman was hired to kill Mary McGinnis, but accidentally killed Mary Lou. This certainly explains how two women with so many characteristics in common were murdered only three days apart. It would also explain why a seemingly unproblematic person like Mary Lou would be murdered. Unlike her, Mary McGinnis was going through a rough patch with her husband, and as a result, the main suspect is Mike Morris, who is believed to be the one who hired the hitman. He was cleared of actually committing the murder of his wife as he was at the movies with his daughter. Mary McGinnis and Mike were having relationship issues. Mike was suspicious that she was having an affair with one of their friends. Just a week before her death, Mike confronted his wife and their friend, although both denied any involvement with one another and Mike presumed they were being truthful. Suspicion against Mike was raised when he refused to take a polygraph test and didn't allow police to talk with his daughter. It was also brought to light that his wife had a life insurance policy of $700,000 for which he was a beneficiary. Oddly enough, Mike had phoned Mary McGinnis two hours before her desperate call to the police. The phone company said it had been a four minute call but Mike claimed that nobody on the other end answered and that the phone company had made a mistake. Many believe that Mike spoke to the killer during that call. Another piece of information that supports this theory is Mary McGinnis's wedding ring not being found on her or in the car. This is a sign of a hitman as they would steal the ring to show whoever hired them that they completed the job. Interestingly enough, a family friend later saw Mike's daughter wearing the ring, which Mike claimed they had later found it. Despite a lot of the evidence suggesting Mike had the biggest reason to hurt his wife, Mary McGinnis's staff member who made her anxious is also a suspect. During the investigation, it was discovered that Dwayne Young had actually tried to discredit Mary McGinnis various times and after unsuccessfully doing so, he quit his job as a nurse. Dwayne has been very vocal on social media. He denies any involvement and blames Mike and Lori. The reason for him quitting his job is uncertain. Some say Mary McGinnis showed the threatening note left on her desk to her superior and they fired him. Others think he was tired of the accusations and wanted to get away. Six months after the murder, Mary Lou's husband, Jay, received a strange bill, a total of $2,000 for his wife's phone card. Police traced this card to a 16-year-old girl in Galveston. The teenager told police that her neighbor had given it to her. When questioned by the police, the neighbor said she had found a purse in a convenience store parking lot a month before. In the purse, she found various personal belongings and the phone card. Strangely, when the purse was returned to her loved ones, no one recognized it as being Mary's. It was also around this time that Jay received three peculiar phone calls. The person calling asked for Mary Lou. Jay, not knowing what he should say, simply told the person that she wasn't there at the moment. He then gave the caller the number of the Harris County Sheriff's Department. When the man called them, he said, oh, yeah, right. He hung up and never called again. Police did trace the call, but couldn't find the man. If these two murders are not connected, as police believe, Mary Lou's case has no suspects. But as many firmly believe, if the two cases are linked, then the only known suspects are Mike Morris and Dwayne Young.